In this video, I'll show you how to embed a nut using an Ender 3 3D printer. The first part will be a free CAD tutorial. In this part, I will show you how to embed the nut in your 3D design. And the second part will be showing how to do the custom G-code. So if you're only interested in how to do the custom G-code, then skip to the chapter where it says custom G-code, and then you can skip the tutorial. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is going to go over to uh, Spreadsheet and we're going to create a spreadsheet to store some variables. So we're going to call this our clamp. And then we're going to, going to need a clearance hole. And this is going to be 7.2 millimeters. And then we're going to need an outer ring, which is going to be 18 millimeters. And we'll save this. Go back to our clamp. Go into part design. And in part design, we're going to select the XY plane because when I want to uh, export it and create a slicing G code for it, then this will automatically put it in the correct plane. But I could always flip it later, so it isn't that critical. First thing we'll do is select the origin twice. One will be a clearance hole and one will be the outer diameter. Now the outer diameter here is going to be, let me look at my notes, 35 millimeter. In the inner diameter, now we select this little button right here and then start typing spreadsheet, it will be capital, and it's gonna be in the B1 field. Okay, so that's gonna be 7.2. Okay, so that's fully defined. Drag these off, close, and then we'll pad this. And this pad's gonna be 14 millimeter. So here's the outer ring. We're gonna put our knurls on here, all right? And then we wanna embed our nut on this surface right here. Now there are a couple ways to do the, the knurls. Uh, we could do it originally uh, on the pad itself right here. We could put the, uh, one knurl in there and then just do a polar pattern. So I think that's what I'll do. Let's go back to this original sketch and then we'll just put a single neural on and then we'll uh, rotate it around and the solid body will just combine into one body. So let's create, um, uh, we could do a simple uh, rectangle and then to make this symmetric, you grab each of these two points, whoops, wrong one, this point in this point in this line, and then this button right here will be symmetrical. Now we we'll make a height. Let's do a couple millimeters. And let's make a width. Maybe just a couple millimeters. Okay. So now if you tried to pad this now, you're going to get an error. And we, what we need to do is we need to trim this area right here. So we'll just trim this. And then we want to make sure that this is connected. Okay, so it's not connected. All right. So you take this one and this one and make these coincident. And then we'll take this one and make this vertical. And now it should be fully defined and set. So let's close it, look at the top plane, and then we have a single neural. Okay. Now if we have this pad selected and we rotate it about itself, we can just do a polar pattern. And let's, let's do about 12 occurrences. Let's do some more. Okay, something like that, and just say okay. Now, if you wanted to chamfer these and whatnot, uh, the, probably the best thing to do is go into Sketch and draw in the chamfer. 
So I'm going to rename this and call this the, the neural pattern. Okay. So I know where I'm at. So we have a basic neural with a hole in it. All right. The next thing we want to do is create another pad on top of this. And this is where, this is where we'll embed our nut. So I select this face and do a sketch. And then we're going to do a clearance hole. And then we're going to do a little bit bigger. Now I drew it off a little bit so that I could select it. And so we'll do a diameter constraint. And again, this is going to be spreadsheet B1, okay? So it didn't line up, so that means that I am not coincident with the center. So we're gonna grab this one and this one and make it coincident. And that'll be exact in the center. And then this outer dimension is gonna be B2. So with this little button again, spreadsheet, B2, okay. Okay. So now what I want to do is just do a short pad. So just come out a couple millimeters. Just so we have a base for it. Okay. And then here, now the next thing we're going to do is an extrude another one on top of this. And this is why I have the spreadsheet because we keep doing this over and over again and we keep grabbing the same dimension. And it's a lot easier, because if you want to change your mind, you can just go into the spreadsheet and simply um, change it and the entire thing will update. And that's really handy. So we'll just do this a little bit bigger and select the diameter, which is going to be the outer, which is going to be B2. So spreadsheet dot B2. And that you can see that it, it it shows 18, which is what it's going to be. All right. And now we want to put in our nuts. So we're going to grab this tool right here. And it looks like I missed the center again. So let me go back. And one thing to do is if you hide this, you can see these a little bit easier. And sometimes I, I miss the center. But if it doesn't turn green, that means you missed it. So be sure and correct it so that everything lines up. Okay. Now the dimension here, I've already measured my nut. I'm using a quarter inch nut. And so I'm going to take a height distance Now, the nut is not quite square. We can align the nut, but you can also take the total distance between the two of those. So if we wanted to align the nut, we just make that horizontal like that, and then you could have done the height. So let's drag this dimension off. So that's going to be our, our nut pocket, and it's going to be we're going to fill in from, from this green line to this green line. So this will not be filled in right here. And that's just exactly what we want. So let's pad this out to 6.5 millimeters, which is going to be the height of the nut plus just a little bit of slack. All right, so I'm going to rename this. This is basically going to be a nut pocket. And this here will be a base pad. And make it a little bit easier to read. And so the last thing we need to do is enclose our nut right here. So this is quite simple. We just select the same face right here, create a new sketch. And then we're just going to pad out a circle with a hole in it. And that's why this spreadsheet comes in so handy is because we can just grab these dimensions again. Now let's see if I have this. All right. They are connected, so this first one is going to be the inner, so that would be B1.
and the second one will be the outer. And we'll close it and we'll pad that off. Just a couple of millimeters will be fine. Okay, so our knurled nut is done. And uh, this is a hold down clamp that I had designed for a telescope, but it could be anything that you want. And this surface right here that's yellow will be will to be against the wood, and then you can just you know turn this. So we are going to slice this and we're going to print it in this direction, and then we're going to stop right there. And then when we stop there, we're going to put the nut in and then let the printer put on the cap. All right, so let's go over to our slicer program and we'll import the clamp body. Now on the preview here, we want to take this layers down and we want to stop right there. So what I did is I drove it down so just before the cap is in. So we do control plus add a custom G code. And then here's the code. Now I had to hack this because uh, my version of Marlin is not uh, respecting the regular commands. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna issue a beep, wait 100 milliseconds and issue another beep. And then I'm gonna use the M25 command because this is the only one that will work with my firmware. I've tried uh, the filament change pause, I've tried a lot of different things, M0, nothing works. M25 does, but the problem with M25 is that this command will not stop until the buffer is cleared. So I've issued a command to go home, send a message to place nuts with this, and then I have another message to go home. And this is, I found that if I do a couple of extra steps, then that'll clear the buffer and actually wait. So let's go ahead and say OK, and then we'll slice it and export our code. All right, let's go print it. All right, we'll go ahead and print this. So here's the place nuts message, and the head has gone to X0, Y0, and it's waiting for me to put the nut in. There's, there's the nut, and then we just go over here to the keyboard and say resume print. And there you go. Piece of cake.